Hello, and welcome to today's webinar on Expedite Your Merger and Acquisition. Integrate your identity infrastructure with Radiant One Federated Identity. My name is Kim Locke. I'm with Radiant Logic, and I'll be your moderator for today's program. Before we begin, I'd like to remind you that your lines will be muted for the duration of the webinar. However, if you have a question, you may enter it in the question portal, and we will have a Q&A session at the end if time allows. If we are not able to get to your question during the webcast, we'll send a personal email to follow up. Also, this webinar will be recorded and sent out along with a copy of the presentation slides within the next 24 hours. Our speaker today is Wade Ellery, Senior Solutions Architect at Radiant Logic. Wade has extensive experience in enterprise IT direct and channel software and services sales and management. He has in-depth knowledge and experience in enterprise IAM, IGA, risk and compliance, and IT security challenges. Over to you, Wade. Thank you, Kim, and welcome everybody to uh, our first back in the office webinar for 2000. Well, actually, I think we did some at the beginning of the year, but since the uh, sheltered home uh, original order, we are now back in the office and, and figuring out again how to work in the same rooms and listen to each other's voices. So I wanted to invite you today to join us for a webinar around mergers and acquisitions and how we can actually expedite this process. Uh, mergers and acquisitions has been one of the major drivers of Radiant Logic over the past decade. It's also a major driver of American business, especially now that interest rates are so low, it's very easy for a large company to borrow money to buy another company, even a company of its own size, and aggregate those two companies together with the concept that the sum of the parts will be more valuable than the individual pieces. One of the big ones that just hit the market uh, and has been finalized finally now is Sprint and um, T-Mobile. You've probably seen a lot of advertisements now for the new T-Mobile, which is now I think even larger than one of the other major players, AT&T or Verizon. So mergers and acquisitions gives companies the ability to compete with larger competitors, gives them the ability to buy revenue that immediately goes to the bottom line and gives them the ability to uh, manage a model in which they can acquire assets, uh, glean value out of other organizations, and then potentially spin them out later. But the challenge with mergers and acquisitions for an IT department are very large. Primarily, they're not allowed to do almost any work until the final uh, day one announcement is made because organizations that are in talks about mergers are still separate financial institutions and they can't share vital information like internal IT infrastructure and systems. So everything is done very vaguely until the flag is dropped and the race is started. And now the drive to pay off on this merger and acquisition investment is very high. And business is expecting immediate value, synergies and, and working across organizations, everything should be seamless. Why is this not able to work as smoothly as we imagined? How come I can't get access to resources in the new company? All these challenges face the IT department. And the users themselves, old and new, um, the IT in, environment uh, needs to be able to make sure that the right people now have access to the right things. So you're not only managing your own organization, but now you're potentially giving people in your organization access to resources in another environment. And even more concerning is you have users in a, a foreign environment, you're now giving access to your resources. They may not have the same security posture you have. They may not have gone through the same processes and rigors in terms of managing their environment. So there's a real challenge there to understand and discover and see and visualize both organizations in a way that you can discover the uh, security risks of this merging of, of identities and access and applications, and also the underlying challenges of simply putting square pegs and round holes and trying to move two companies together. It's a sizable challenge for large enterprises. Most big mergers that you see publicly advertised are very large companies. If you imagine back to 2008, Wells Fargo swallowed Wachovia, uh, Roche has, has uh, absorbed Genentech, Bayer uh, Pharmaceuticals or Bayer International just bought Monsanto recently. There's lots of examples of these massive mergers and these cause a tremendous uh, upheaval in the IT infrastructure because you're taking these heterogeneous systems and trying to put them together in a logical way as quickly as possible 
really painting the car while you're driving down the freeway. And there's some specific challenges to this, to this model that we're gonna help you address today with Radiant Logic and explain how using Radiant Logic in this scenario, ahead of a merger, in the middle of the merger, post merger, can give you value and deliver on the original dream of the sum of the parts is worth more than the individual companies and do that in a time frame that actually delivers uh, first quarter revenue potentially uh, increases by merging these systems effectively. But what's the real challenge of just an ad hoc merger of saying, you know, okay, we're, we're gonna just do business as usual. Now we have to absorb another company. Let's create a bunch of one-off scenarios. Let's sort of figure this out as we go and we'll deal with each scenario as we come across it and we'll code our way out of this problem. Well, that costs too much. That responding reactively to this model is a very expensive model, a very expensive approach to take to address this challenge and it takes too long. We've talked to dozens and dozens of prospects and customers who have done mergers two and three and four years ago and still have remnants of that merger and acquisition sitting on their network, legacy applications that can't be moved, identities in, in disparate databases or disparate uh, AD domains that have not been merged yet, applications that can't talk cross organization because the effort it takes to do this is very high and you're competing with all the other projects inside an IT organization. You can't just freeze the company and concentrate on M&A. You have to keep the wheels turning. So this stretches out <clears throat> over a long period of time and becomes very difficult. And when you end up doing this ad hoc model, you're writing code, you're writing scripts, you're doing one half uh, processes that are functional enough to get you over the immediate problem in front of you, but don't build any kind of run book. There's no playbook here for what about the next merger? Can we use these same processes? No, those were hard coded to what we discovered in the last merger. We're going to have to do it all over again in the next merger. So you keep repeating the same effort over and over again. And then you end up with inevitably orphaned applications because when you're merging organizations together, someone is being told, I'm sorry, the world you used to live in isn't going to exist in the new model that we have. So you're gonna to have to adapt. And a lot of applications, especially legacy or homegrown applications, have specific needs in the way they see identity data. They're looking for a particular structure, they're looking for a particular schema extensions that they're used to. And when you merge these organizations together, just for efficiency and security and the ability to manage it, you can't take all the idiosyncrasies of all those systems and include that in this mega monster that you create. It becomes untenable. So these applications become orphaned. They become unable to actually function in the world that they were in. And we'll talk about how we can address that also. So all these challenges that you're looking at here to M&A, which are the nightmares, the things that keep IT people up at night, these can all be addressed with Radiant Logic. We've actually sped up the integration of large organizations. They've been told we're basically doing in weeks what used to take months or years we're able to bring organizations together virtually almost immediately and getting people working cross corporation very quickly, but still shielding people from the uh, security challenges of just throwing open the floodgates, putting in a two way trust everywhere and figuring that everybody's safe and fine. You can't do that today in a modern corporation. There is too much value in the data. There's too much value in the information. There's personal customer information. There's IP, there's design and, and uh, functional pieces of the organization that give them a competitive advantage in the marketplace. You can't let that information be vulnerable to a unsecure scenario. So you really have to tighten down, not loosen up. Throwing up AD trusts everywhere is really loosening up because you can now pretty much patrol wherever you want to, get whatever you can, and certain accounts could have access they weren't supposed to, very difficult to see and challenge and control. You also need to connect users to new platforms. You've got new systems in terms of company A is looking at company B's infrastructure. These are all new applications, all new single sign-on or governance platforms that you need to integrate into. So you need to bring these users into these platforms very quickly and very easily. And then you have old identity directory infrastructure, old AD domains and forests that 
you've been talking about consolidating and, and simplifying, but you haven't gotten to it yet. You've got LDAP directories, you have databases full of data about identities, you have applications storing identity data, and now you've got applications in the cloud with identity data. You need to be able to take this opportunity to not only merge the company together, but modernize your infrastructure. If you're gonna make a move, make a move to a better place. Instead of doing the minimum just to get by so I can survive and get on to the next week, take this opportunity to move the organization forward a full generation. But you normally don't do that in a merger because you're panicked that you just have to get people connected, get it over with, and get on to the next thing. But with Radiant Logic, we can buy you time. We can buy you the ability to step back after you get everybody working together virtually and say, okay, now, now that I have this opportunity, what would I do if I had a clean slate? What would I build if I had the opportunity to make a whole new infrastructure? What nagging problems in my model do I have that I'd love to get rid of? Now that I have the opportunity, this is an excellent time to do that. And you've got budget. Mergers and acquisitions drive budget. So now you have an opportunity to get people in place, to get solutions in place, to model the world you want. And as a benefit of this merger and getting the two organizations working together, you build a better company. You build a better IT infrastructure. You solve some long-term problems. So what we're gonna do is allow you to decouple the applications from the infrastructure. We're gonna show you that graphically because it's a little bit conceptual to, to understand, but Radiant Logic sits between the applications and the identity infrastructure, the sources of identity data, and by decoupling those, by reducing or eliminating the interdependencies of those two pieces, I have a, a universal joint in the middle now. I can move either end and not disrupt or upset the other end. I can, I can change a backend identity source and remodel it and, and consolidate it and join it together with other identities from the merged company, and my applications don't break. They don't have to go through a full reconfiguration each time I make a shift. I can abstract that information and separate it. I can reduce overall complexity and support overhead because I have visibility now that I never had before. I have a single pane of glass to see my world through. And access management solutions and identity management and governance solutions can be consolidated down and go one place to get all the identity information they need. We make everything else work better. And this is now more reliable, more stable, more scalable, and especially repeatable. Because what's going to happen? Three months, six months, 12 months from now, your company's going to buy somebody else. They're going to acquire somebody else, or you're going to be acquired. And if you've got a working, repeatable, in-place model that allows the flexibility that we're looking at here, you can be the people driving the ship. You may be acquired, but you've got the better infrastructure. You've got the better tools. You've got the ability to stand up in the room and say, look, I can make this easier, faster, more efficient, and more secure if you use our proven scenario, our proven platform for mergers and acquisitions. And now you're in charge as opposed to being the tail on the dog. So there's some steps to do this. There's really a process that Radiant Logic can walk you through to understand how to build this aggregated world of two disparate corporations. And this is really bread and butter Radiant Logic technology. We've been working on this for 20 years. We've been done some of the largest mergers and acquisitions in, in the US corporate world. You can point to and say Radiant Logic was right in the middle of that. Radiant Logic brought together CVS and Aetna. Radiant Logic brought together Wells Fargo and Wachovia. Radiant Logic was in the middle of Roche swallowing Genentech. We were part of the solution to those challenges. And we've done that by building an out of the box solution with mouse driven and wizard driven functions that allow you to do this very quickly, very efficiently, in a very flexible manner. So you're not pouring concrete. You're not making one decision you have to live with for 10 years. You have the ability to do this as a process. And as you learn, as you get more information, as you're exposed to more data on the acquired company, you can adapt, you can shift your model, you can incorporate new concepts and new information into the solution. So we're gonna start with building a lightweight union because if you want to merge two companies together, you need to have one place where all the users exist but they only exist once, and that's what a union is. It's a join of, of an aggregation of all the different user sources on both sides and a disambiguation. So if I have overlapping users, I have the same user in both systems, I, I 
don't I put those together and, and aggregate them, but if I have the same identifier in both systems that are different people, I don't put them together. I disambiguate, I clean up all this data and synchronize it. Now I'm doing all this virtually, so I'm not disrupting my systems. I'm not turning over the Apple card on Friday and hoping on Monday that I got all my guesses right. I'm doing this on a virtual layer so I can model this right up front. Then I'm gonna join all the information I have from all these sources together to my profile. I'm gonna build out that rich user profile with all the information from HR, from AD, from LDAP directories, from security databases, from training systems, from all the things I need, from Salesforce, from Workday, from ServiceNow, bring all that information into the profile. So when I look in Radiant Logic, I see my user once in a union, once in a big list, but I also see all the attributes associated with him from all the sources that he has identity data in. So I now have a unified view of this user. And now I can create tailored views. You may be looking at that unified view of the user saying, well, yeah, you just built a meta directory, but you know, meta directories don't work because everybody tries to get exactly what they want, but it's in a one size fits all model and everyone's disappointed and they go off and do what they want because you can't build one directory that services everybody's needs because I need a flat list and I need a hierarchical structure and I need extended attributes and I need to label it F name and L name because I'm feeding a SaaS application that doesn't understand given name and SN. And you can't do that in a single meta directory. But what Radiant Logic allows you to do is take this global profile that you've created now as a source of identity data that's accurate, that monitors the back ends for, back ends for changes in real time so we can update this data and make sure that it's always accurate and then create what we call identity views, views of the data, subsets of users, attributes, schemas, structure, and protocol that you would expose this information in. It can be REST, it can be LDAP, it can be a SQL table, it can be an XML interface. We take those views, these individualized subsets of data and attributes and format and structure and make those available to the application in exactly the way they want to see the data. So every application sees identity data as if it was tailored to them, thinking they're the center of the universe, when in all reality, they're getting a common feed of data from all the back ends, but we're modeling it for them. And right next to them, another application, a governance solution, is getting a whole different set of information in a different format and different structure so it can do its governance work. Same sources of truth represented in different ways for different consuming applications. In this way, you can start to work cross organization really quickly because each platform and each organization doesn't have to have its own back end stood up now to incorporate the new users from the merged company. We can make the users on company A look like company B users to company B applications and vice versa. Company B users can use company A applications because as far as the application is concerned, the world just got bigger. We can do a lot of work inside the organizational and, and authorization structure. You've got nested groups and, and normalizing information and discovering group membership and ownership and whether people have managers or not in place for your governance solution. We can go in and, and engineer all of that information for you so we can deliver the kind of uh, functionality that you were used to in your existing world. Now we can broaden that functionality out so it spans all the uh, infrastructure you have in this now merged model and manage those groups, merge groups from different organizations or separate them and remodel them because sales in one company may be all about salespeople and sales in the other company may be actually a, a group that was more tied to a marketing function or business development and they're not necessarily the same people you want to shove together into one big global sales group. So you need to understand these separations and be able to model the information without breaking anything. And then as we move forward, migrating that data, consolidating that information, as we'll show you in the graphics, the ability to actually merge this data together is critical because you don't necessarily want to operate as two separate entities, although we virtually have you working together almost instantly. Uh, instant is a relative term. Um, we want you to be able over time now to consolidate, to save money, to simplify the infrastructure, to increase security, to reduce cost and expense and attack uh, surfaces in the organization.
So again, as we talked about in building that, that union, I need to make sure that if I've got a, a L Landry and a Lana Landry identifiers and they're both Lana Landry, I put those together in different systems and I give you a unified view. So, so Lana has all the attributes, all the access, all the group membership, all the identity data from both of those sources and that she exists in. But in the same time, I have to understand that S. Mathis and um, could be Sarah or Steve, and those are the same identifier, but different people. So I need to be able to identify people on other attributes. And we have very powerful tools in the system. Again, this is all mouse and wizard driven that allow you to get as far and as deep as creating cascading set of rules that say first name matches and last name matches and hire date matches and phone number matches and city matches. I'm going to say that's the same person. I'm going to put them together. But if just simple SAM account name matches, I'm not going to use that as a default because I could inadvertently put a uh, financial clerk and the CFO together if they happen to be the same name in AD and end up with a real problem. So the tools are there for you to deal with some of the issues. And they're there because we've been doing this for a long time. We've been doing this for large organizations. We understand the roadblocks you're going to run into. We know the challenges that are coming down the road. We've seen them. We've solved them. They're in the product and they're not coding. You're not writing code and scripts and having developers sit in cubicles for six months to make the solution work. This is out of the box, ready to go because you don't have six months to explain to management, well, we're working on getting the companies merged together. We think somewhere in 2022, we'll be ready to go. They're not going to like that answer. They want to know where in 2020 are they going to get their full synergy of these two organizations working together. Similarly, once I have these correlated users, I want to pull all these attributes together. I want to understand all the information I have on these systems and make sure I don't have a duplicate user in my union because any kind of single sign-on platform will not function if I have duplicate user identifiers. And I want to build that rich profile with all the identity data that I need. And again, in Radiant Logic, this is an out of the box process. So the challenge with mergers and acquisitions is that most organizations um, haven't, uh, many, many, many have, but a lot of organizations that are trying mergers and acquisitions haven't implemented Radiant Logic yet. They've used the old standard model. I'm just going to connect all my systems one off to the back end identity sources. I'm going to create this cross pollinated web of of crisscrossing connectors and scripts and transformation logic and ETL processes so I can get data from multiple sources into my access management solutions, my identity governance platform, my identity administration provisioning platform, my, my uh, PAM management system for, for privileged accounts. All these platforms that uh, depend on identity data are critical in an IT infrastructure for mergers and acquisitions. They're what keep you safe, they're what give you access, they're what keep the business running. And it's no one's fault that this is the model that you built, this is the way you were told to do things. You were told that, that everything had to be connected one-to-one -one and you hated SiteMinder because it was so hard to configure multiple realms and connect to different systems and transform data and you just wanted it to work easily. We have been the boon for, for SiteMinder for so many years because we can come in and make the world look like a single set of identities to your access management solution. So it has one place to go to get everything it needs to do its work. And that makes the system so much easier to use. And this plays out in every other platform you're looking at. If you're going to migrate to Azure AD, you want to have a simple unified view of users in one place to get that data. If you're doing access management from any of the products in the market that do access management for federated access, for local on-premise web access management, they want to go one place and get everything they need. Governance needs to see the whole organization in a normalized set with a common identifier across all systems so it can do its own disambiguation and correlation, but it doesn't want to go through the heavy work. Now, if you imagine trying to merge two organizations together that have this mess, you're just doing an exponential increase in complexity. And where you increase on complexity, you lose security, you lose scalability, and you lose functionality. And all that is a loss of revenue, and it'll have an impact. And if you merge two organizations together and a compromise in one organization, and you may have remembered somewhere recently, there was a large merger of a uh, an online a uh, bulletin board uh, search engine company and, and another organization and the breaches of one were inherited by the other 
And that's a challenge because you can really damage a company tremendously if you have a breach. But in this situation, how would you know? How could you see? What kind of visibility do you have? So with Radiant Logic, we're going to pull all these sources of identity together for you. We're going to eliminate that crisscross of lines. We're going to eliminate the need for the access management solution, the governance solution, the reporting tools, the analysis tools, the uh, provisioning platforms. We're going to eliminate the need for them to individually connect to all these back ends. We're going to give them one place to go, Radiant Logic, federated identity service, to get all the information they need. Now, again, how is this possible? Because one application needs a REST interface because it's a mobile app. Another application needs to see an LDAP infrastructure, but it's an AD schema that it's expecting. Another application is looking for information that's actually in a database and an LDAP directory and it expects to see it as an INET org person object. How do you do that? Well, the power of Radiant Logic is twofold. One, the ability to connect to all these disparate systems to understand data in a database, a directory, active directory, web services, calls, APIs from Workday. We understand that data. We can see it. We can abstract it from the back ends and pull it into Radiant Logic into a common format. And that allows you then to build with that whatever you want. It's like a set of Lego. When you get a new Lego set on the box, there's a pretty picture of the space shuttle. You want to build the space shuttle, all the pieces are there to do it. But you may want to turn around and build a, an excavation machine, or you may want to build some spacecraft or something else that is inspired by your creativity or the needs of your organization. You have the pieces at hand. You can put them together as you need for each consuming uh, application that needs identity data. So there's the ability for us to connect to the back end, to understand that information, to pull it forward and unify it, but then turn around and model it and publish it out to the applications, the consuming endpoints in exactly the format, the schema, the structure that they need. And this is a boom. This concept is a boom when you think about a merger and acquisition, because now you're able to move within organizations, move across platforms independent of sources and targets. So the infrastructure ends up looking like this. We're a foundational layer. We sit above the identity infrastructure. We sit below the consuming identity uh, applications and we provide data exactly as it's needed. We're the pipes in the wall. We're gonna pump in the water at the right pressure, right temperature, right location at the right time. But you need a faucet on the end of that pipe. You need a shower head or a dishwasher or a, a bathtub uh, faucet to be able to use that information the way you want in all these different ways. And that's what these applications on top are. They're the faucets that we feed identity data to. And as you add more sources in the bottom, we simply expand the view of information that the application sees. As you switch out an access management system, get rid of one vendor to bring in another because they seem to be shinier, you simply connect them to one unified set of identity data. It makes it much simpler for them to be able to integrate in your organization and it makes their platform faster, easier, more scalable to have Radiant Logic in play. So let's talk about mergers and acquisitions, specific use cases here. Because what you see with mergers and acquisitions is the same model that we just talked about here. I have multiple applications talking to multiple consumers of identity data, single sign-on, access management, governance tools, ex external SSO, cloud federation, SaaS applications, all these functions on the application layer, you're using access management and governance tools. And then those are all talking to different backend sources, databases, directories, uh, LDAP directories that were stood up because I needed to have an INET org person for this particular application. So I provisioned data all over the place. And as one of our our advocates at, um, it used to be uh, in Kenna, I can't remember the pronunciation of the company's new name, but his, his mantra is stop copying data. Please, Lord, stop copying data. And that's been something we've done to solve this problem. We've stood up all these silos of data and provisioned them and deprovisioned them and then not track them. And, and somebody left the organization and still had active accounts and five platforms. And then I end up with all these orphaned accounts and these systems I don't know who they belong to. And I can't see them anywhere in a central view, so I can't manage it very well. And that's a problem. And that's a problem for going forward for any organization. But now, again, our challenge is, how do we mush two complex, chaotic systems together and get functionality and security and revenue 
out of this model? Well, we're gonna take three simple steps to do this. We're gonna start with cross entity access. We're gonna give you that virtual ability to work across company very quickly, almost day one, if you're, if you're really on top of it here. And this gets the organization the business functionality it needs to be able to start making business decisions about how the business is going to aggregate. Who are they going to furlough? What systems are they going to sunset? What platforms are they going to integrate? What are they going to standardize on? All this becomes decisions business can make when it sees the organization as a whole. Nothing's moved yet. I've just done this virtually, but I delivered that view now that early. Then I'm gonna take the data sources, the back ends, and I'm gonna work on consolidating those. I'm gonna work on moving that data, but because I've abstracted that from the applications, I don't have to worry about breaking everything every time I try to consolidate a back end. And if I eliminate a structure in a system that was necessary for an application, I can just create a view of that structure and represent that data as if it still existed that way in the back end, even though that system may be long gone. And then once I go through the data source aggregation and do that work, I've got the application migration and consolidation. I have the chance to go in now and clean up my applications, standardize on what we want to use, bring in a new vendor if that's appropriate, whatever may be the case on the application side. And again, those application integrations will be so much simpler because I have a single point to go to to get all my identity data. So phase one, cross enable entity identity access or enable cross identity entity access wow i can't say that one at all so anyway stick it all together um and by doing that you put radiant logic in the middle now radiant logic doesn't sit in the middle physically it sits on one of the uh organization's infrastructures and we can deploy on physical machines virtual machines we can deploy on uh, identities or uh, infrastructures to service in aws or azure or google wherever your data center is or data centers are, you can roll Radiant Logic in and we can start connecting to the backend systems. Now, in many scenarios, this may be a system hosted in company A. Company B may be a high bandwidth VPN connection to their network is the first step of connecting the two companies together. That's all we need. We just need to be able to get to the data. We need to be able to uh, have a service account that provides us access and an IP channel to get back to that information. And we can start pulling that data together. And once we pulled it together, Virtually, we can have somebody in that orange LDAP directory on the bottom right hand side there actually access a, an application here on the upper left hand side off of the blue access management cube. Because when he comes into the cloud application, he's challenged for his identity. He presents his identity as it exists in that uh, orange LDAP directory. And the system will route through Radiant Logic, authenticate his credentials, get his group membership, send that information back to the access management layer, and he's on his way. So I'm immediately now working across organization, but I've not disrupted any of my existing infrastructure. And again, this can be done very quickly, very easily, um, and has immediate benefits and, and payoff uh, for the system. But again, from a security standpoint, you're not throwing open the floodgates. You have complete control over what identities have access to what resources, who can transit between organizations, what additional layers of security you layer in at the Radiant One level to control um, authorization to resources. You're not just throwing open a, a two-way trust and saying, I just sure hope this works or, um, I, or I'm out of here before somebody figures out the mistake we just made by opening up our environment to what may be an unsecured partner. So in this scenario, you can work, but you don't have to worry about that complete exposure. You have time to go now and with the tools in Radiant Logic, discover the nature of your acquired company's IT infrastructure. Are they highly audited and very secure and, and tightly controlled and, and reviewed and, and attested to on a regular basis and somebody you can trust as equally as you do yourself? Or are they a little bit more wild west out there and you're not quite sure and there may be a couple rogue admin accounts floating around that I need to make sure I nail down before I, I have open up systems on both sides. So this gives you that time. And now I can take these back end platforms and start to consolidate them. I can start to merge my AD environment. I can move all my users from company B into my company A forest if I want to. I can consolidate a LDAP infrastructures. I can even replace LDAP infrastructures with Radiant One. Inside Radiant One is our HDAP store, which is a fully compliant LDAP v3 directory service. 
all the functionality of an LDAP environment. It is an LDAP environment. It is an LDAP server. So you can replace multiple different LDAP servers as long as you don't have overlapping namespace with a single instance of Radiant Logic. So I can start to consolidate my identities, minimize the amount of information that I am replicating and duplicating, and make this much less expensive and, and difficult to maintain. I can incorporate database information. I can start going out to the cloud and pulling down information from Azure or Okta or pull it down from Salesforce or ServiceNow, wherever I need to get the data from. I can start to build that as data sources now, making that available to my applications. And now in the final phase, and again, this is possible because I've insulated change on the bottom from change on the top. So the change to the application layer, the access management, the governance, the privilege account management systems, my reporting tools, any changes I make there, they have one place to go to get all the identity data. The backend systems don't know I switched out my access management layer. They're just happily giving information to Radiant. Radiant is sharing that information with the access management system. If it happens to need data in a different format, if it uses a different structure, it has a different schema, that you want to map to, that's fine. The backends never know. And you can make this information available now to those systems as you need to. And as this expands, you can expand your platform. Many companies we talk to, we say, well, what do you have for access management? What are you using for single sign-on? And they'll say, one of each. We've rolled out seven different products because each department got to choose what they wanted and each one went out and did their own thing. And now we're trying to manage this mess. Well, you have an opportunity here in this model to consolidate now. You, you've got budget, you've got attention, you've got the argument here that I'm saving money, I'm increasing security, I'm increasing scalability. Let me merge my platforms together. Now there may be times though when merging is not really what you wanna do. You don't have an alternative usually because I've acquired another company and I can't just let them sit there on the outside so I need to bring them into my infrastructure. I need to bring their users into my domains. I need to give them access to my single sign-on so they can work in our organization across platforms. Um, and I end up migrating all these users in and eliminating the original infrastructure they had. But if the company's plan is, hey, you know, we're company A, we're a big, giant, multinational conglomerate. We buy little companies like company B. We spend two years enhancing their functionality, increasing their processes, using all our knowledge to make them more efficient, and then we spin them out for a profit. Or we spend two years gutting all the intellectual property and, and, and knowledge and, and key workers, and then we spin them off um, when we're done, and we, we just basically discard what's left. Either one of those business models, and they sound rather cruel on the secondary side, but that's the way business operates, those require the ability to spin off that company to say, you know what, today we're one company, tomorrow we're gonna to be two. That's a challenge. That's a challenge if you are trying to do that within an already merged organization. And it's a challenge if you're trying to do it within a system where you're acquiring companies and spinning them out on purpose. What you can do with Radiant Logic is actually set up Radiant Logic on both organizations, set up inner cluster replication, sharing information between the Radiant Logic entities, so that a user in company B, again, can get access to or see resources and access resources in company A. So I can work cross company. I have people in company A can go over and, and apply their knowledge and skills and, and enhancements to company B to make it more valuable or the opposite. And in two years, when I'm ready to spin this organization out, instead of having to spend nine months rebuilding an IT infrastructure for the company I'm spinning out and pulling them out one at a time from my AD domains and all the places they've weaseled into different applications, I have two physically separate organizations still available to me. I simply cut the connection in the middle and company B has a fully functional IT infrastructure. They are an operational company out of the box I had no work to do. And company A now has everything it needed, everything it got from company B while it was working. And now I've separated the two organizations physically and legally. This is a, an opportunity for organizations that are doing mergers and acquisitions and spin-offs and divestitures to model a scenario where it's much simpler, much easier to do, and gives you all the benefits with none of the pain and the problem. So this can be, a real challenge, especially in an AD world, if you're trying to just simply 
open up trust between different uh, organizations and, and merge together active directories, you have different schemas, you have different structures, you have different data, you stuff something in car license because you needed to have uh, a, an identifier there for project assignment, but the other company uses car license for something else or extended attribute 12 is used for something in company A that's completely different than company B. You can't just shove those together. You don't want to lose the value of that information. There's an application that's expecting a particular attribute in extended attribute 12 that it wants to see. So you have some real challenges, even in a simple just AD to AD world of putting all this information together. And this is where Radiant Logic comes into play. We have the ability for things like structure to simply take the two structures, maintain them, put them under a common roof, and now applications that can do subtree searches can find exactly what they're looking for the way they used to find it in the same structure that they used to have, if that's a model that the application needs. But again, one size doesn't fit all. So I have this view of my world, which I'm going to make, I'm going to set aside, I'm going to have applications consume it. And then I'm going to have another view of the world where I'm actually going to consolidate information together. I'm going to reorganize my tree. I'm going to put all my users or my partners under a particular organizational structure for applications that need to see everything in a flat lawn as opposed to a hierarchical tree. And I'm going to let the application attach at DC equals partners and get access to this information across these two systems. And I'm going to take this view and set it over here next to the other one. So now I have two sets of applications accessing two different views from one set of data on the back end, immediately available to that data is available for those applications in a unified view as they want it. And I haven't moved anything on the back end yet. I have all the time in the world to shift the back end. And I can build new hierarchies. I can build new organizational structures. I can model different views of the data so I can build out what I need in my environment. I may have I acquired a company that did everything based on uh, department and, and uh, uh, organizational chart. And I am a geographically distributed company. I do things by continent and country and then region and then operating company. And so I need to organize the information that way. You can imagine the complexity of trying to recode and remap this information. In Radiant Logic, this is point and click. We have the logic engine built already that sorts all this out, that remaps the CNs and DNs, recalculates group membership, takes care of this, and allows you, if you need to, to tunnel all the way back to the original source to validate credentials so I can use those credentials in my original source, even though I've completely reorganized my infrastructure and my users in a completely different location. And I can do multiple views. So I've got two already. I just made a third, a hierarchical one. Now I'm going to make a flat lawn for my single sign-on. I'm going to put everything in a flat list. And I'm going to have that view existing simultaneously with all the other views of my data. This is what's powerful about Radiant Logic is not only can we bring two companies together, but we can model for your applications whatever they need to see in the nature of these mergers. And this is where our, our customers get really excited because they're looking at a massive compromise or a massive disappointment because everybody has a requirement for what they want and what they need. And when you put two companies together, some people are going to win, some people are going to lose. And sometimes it becomes a political battle of one group has more pull, more authority. We bought you, you didn't buy us. And they get to force their model on the other company. And then that company struggles with a loss of functionality, a loss of access, applications don't work. They're, they're floundering at that side because it didn't, we didn't, it weren't able to accommodate them. With Radiant, it's a no harm, no foul model. You need something a certain way. It doesn't hurt me to give it to you that way. It doesn't affect my models, my systems, my applications that I really care about. Sure, have the data the way you want it. Go play over there if you want, and you'll be able to have functionality, scalability, and security just like me, and we'll maybe even be friends in the end. And in very large organizations where you, you look at, uh, say, in the federal space or com multinational companies or companies that operate with multiple operating companies where I can't merge those companies together, we have a large entertainment company that's a customer of ours. And each of their silos of creativity, the people that make the animated films, the people that run the parks, the people that make the uh, uh, 
space and, and futuristic sci-fi movies, the people that make the um, computer graphics movies, those are all little enclaves of creativity that are isolated to themselves. They're not required to interact with everyone else. They don't want to cross-pollinate and make a, a big vanilla model. They love the fact that I have diversity within the organization. But if you think of a corporation operating on that scale, they need to have visibility across all those silos of data. They need to be able to look into each of those organizations and say, hey, I'm doing governance and auditing compliance. You are meeting the company requirements. My SOD uh, separations of duty are in place. My SOX compliance is all in place because I can see into these silos without absorbing them, without consolidating them. And at the higher level, I can now offer shared services. I can say, hey, we're all going to one tenant in Office 365 with Azure AD. I can bring all these different systems together virtually, provide them access to Office 365 in a single tenant, even though they still exist in multiple disparate platforms, maybe with different domains and forests and directories and data. And if I'm doing other shared services, there's other applications like corporate email that I need to be ubiquitous. I can provide that without having to consolidate all my back ends. So you may have a business model where you really need to operate as autonomous silos of function within the corporation, but you have functions that you need to make available across the top of everything. Radiant Logic can provide you with that capability. These systems can run autonomously. Radiant can see all the information in those platforms without being disruptive, without changing things, without forcing people to standardize on one format or one process. We can bring that data together and then we can make it available to all the platforms that provide shared services. We can get it up into Azure AD tenant. We can bring it into single sign-on platforms. We can get it to your governance uh, system so we can manage and, and, and handle governance requirements. So that is some of the benefits that are available from Radiant Logic for mergers and acquisitions. We actually have a white paper, Fast Track Your M&A with Radiant Logic FID, Federated Identity Service. And that's available. It's a link that you're going to get when we send you a recording of this webinar and we send you a set of these slides. But you can also download it, I believe, off the GoToMeeting link right now. That is available also. I recommend uh, grabbing this, especially if you're uh looking at a merger and acquisition coming down the road if you're in the middle of one right now it's not too late at any point because we're non-disruptive we don't break everything when we come into play we come in quietly we start to provide value we expand the use so if you're in the middle of an MA and you're struggling radiant launch is a great tool to bring in now even even in the review and sales cycle it'll provide value and if you've been through m a's and you still got legacy domains hanging off your network, you've got applications that, that are still stuck on the old infrastructure, you've got things you were just never able to get over and absorb that are really anchors on your ankles that are keeping you from being agile. Bring Radiant Logic in. We will solve those problems. We will re we'll remove the remnants of your multiple MAs that are still hanging around and give you a lean, clean, sleek and secure platform to run from so you can absorb the next company much more quickly. So there's a lot of value here in every scenario and corporate um, surveys show basically if if you haven't had a merger and acquisition in the last five years, you're way overdue. If you have, you still got remnants of it laying around and it's something that's only growing at this point because again, the cost of money is so cheap, companies can buy other companies at almost zero financial risk. Um, but the key is, if they don't show synergy, if they can't work together, if the systems flounder because of disconnected IT infrastructure, heads are going to roll, money is going to be lost, opportunity is going to be lost. You can imagine right now that T-Mobile and Sprint are really working hard to get their stuff together because they're competing in a marketplace now with two other gorillas and they need to be a gorilla too. They can't be two chimpanzees holding hands. So synergy, uh, merger, and, and the ability to work across system immediately is very important. I want to thank everybody for the uh, attending our webinar today. I'm going to touch on the fact that we have another webinar on the 23rd of July in two weeks. It's providing a complete integrated view of identity data for your identity provider. And your identity provider is that platform now that we're all moving toward what is now being called modern authorization and modern authentication. I want to go to SaaS applications. I want to go to cloud-based applications. I want to go to SAML and WSFed and OAuth and OpenID Connect. 
I want to simplify my single sign-on to all these uh, non-hosted applications, these non-legacy on-premise applications. That is critical to having a complete and integrated view of your identity data. Um, so we'll talk to you in two weeks about how to do that. Now, what I'm gonna do now is um, pause the presentation, should go back to a regular slide, and I'm gonna slip over to uh, questions and see what we've got any questions in the system and the things that I can answer. Because for once, if for those of you that attended more than one of our webinars, um, I've actually finished ahead of schedule. So that's an amazing. And um, I will use this opportunity to address some questions that we have and then put in. If you have any questions you want to add right now, by all means, go ahead and include those also. So um, question one, this is, oh, this is a great one. Do companies ever complete total integration of two companies? It seems there's always leftovers. And that's, that's traditionally true. And, and the challenge that we talked about here and the model that most organizations follow, you can't get to a one size fits all scenario. It's just not the nature of identity management. It's not the nature of, of identity infrastructure of application integration. There's too much, sort of idiosyncrasies and, and legacy requirements. So you get into a scenario where you're not able to easily put all that information together. And in doing that, you uh, end up with leftovers. You end up with um, systems that are not integrated. They're either still holding on to legacy identity infrastructure so those applications can still work, or they're hobbled and they're they're not they're not effective and they're basically um, waiting quickly for someone to find a replacement. But a lot of times that's very difficult. You may have built an application 10 years ago that has a lot of functionality integrated deeply into your shipping, receiving, and order management system. You can't just go out to the cloud and find a really nice SaaS application that does all the things that yours already does that's tailored to your company model that's been tightly integrated with your systems. So these are not systems that are easily removed and thrown out. So you end up with that model. But with Radiant, what's really cool is you may have a infrastructure that was based on e-directory, that it used e-directory schema, e-directory structure, and that's what the applications talk to that you built, and they expect to see that e-directory model. We've actually done this for a number of customers. You can replace that e-directory infrastructure with Radiant Logic's FID, we can actually take information from your Active Directory and model it in Radiant to look like your eDirectory, or we can migrate all your eDirectory information directly into Radiant Logic's HDAP store, so it is an LDAP directory in itself, but it appears to be an eDirectory schema, structure, function, process. And so when your applications connect, they think they're talking to eDirectory still. Oh, that system is now gone. So you may have merged three years ago and have this e-directory platform sitting out there still that you're trying to get rid of, but you, know, you just can't. Bring Radiant Logic in. We will mimic that data. We will give you a platform that allows you to use your existing identity data to look like that e-directory, point the application to it, everything works, shut that old system down, and now you've got that leftover off the plate. Um, next question, how is identity matching done? Uh, and this is, this is a great one. It is. Well, my joke is when we stop shipping an actual physical box with a, a manual inside it, we stop shipping the magic wand that lets you do identity matching magically. There is no magic to this. There is basically a lot of very powerful logic engine tools built into Radiant Logic. We have the capability in memory to hold a tremendous amount of information and juggle that information together to correlate identities across multiple different systems and build a unified global profile. And we do that by looking for key fields in each system that we can use to link that information. Now, those don't have to be the same key field across each platform. I may link you between two AD domains by email address. I may link you between that, that joined set of AD domains and a new database by an employee number. I can use different identifiers to do different linkings and I'm building this chain of associations that I use to then populate and create the global profile or join information to that profile. But not always do you have an identifier that is exists in, in both systems that is unique. So we can then use our tools to do cascading rules to build unique identifiers. We can actually concatenate information. We had this at a major uh, government, state government institution 
we were told, hey, all the uh, users have a unique identifier. We said, that's great. Correlating users across 23 different state departments to give you that corporate view, that overarching ability to see and audit and manage, you're not gonna you're not gonna consolidate 23 departments into one AD domain. That won't work. They're all independent, but you need to manage them on a state level. You need to provide basically cloud application access for email and services to a unified view. Radiant Logic can look across all those 23 different departments. We'll use that unique identifier as the user identifier. So if the user is working in two departments because they're in natural resources, but they're also in water resources, and sometimes they're on projects in both agencies. That's fine, we got a unique identifier. Yeah, well, we found out that unique identifier, I could have the same number appear in two different agencies be different people. So what we did is we concatenated agency and identifier to get a string that was unique. And now with that unique string, we can identify users as unique within the organization and link them together. So we can manipulate the data to create unique identifiers within a system. Or as I mentioned earlier, we can do cascading rules. We can get into a scenario where we're actually looking at multiple attributes simultaneously for matches. And we can do or matches. So if first name or last name matches and your company name matches and your location matches, but you're not terminated in HR, then we're going to join you. So I can build some really complex rules, and again, this is all mouse driven, that allow me to build scenarios that filter down to the point that I can get some association with identities. Now, this is usually a, a progressive process. You come in and you, you build scenarios to match the first largest set of correlated identities you can get. You get 60% of the pie on that one. Then you come back in with a more refined rule to get that other 40%, you get 25% more out of that. So now you've got 90% of your identities correlated. You're gonna get down to some point where a human being has to look at the data. The value of Radiant Logic is we can show you the data. We can show you the anomalies. We can show you the orphaned accounts. We can show you the incomplete accounts. We can show you the systems where the, the identifier doesn't match syntax. We can show you the outliers so you can go in and look at that data and go, okay, someone was creating a user, they misspelled their name. So instead of deleting them, they just they hit cancel and went on and um, created the user again. So they left this junk in my AD environment. And believe me, when you have the visibility that Radiant Logic has, you'll find a lot of junk out there. Your IT infrastructure is a lot like your garage at home. When you first moved in, you could put two cars in it. I dare you now to even lift the garage door and think about putting a car in there. You've got so much stuff in there now, and I know because I do, um, it's it's things that are undealt with. It's, it's what they call IT debt. Radiant Logic lets you see, it lets you open the garage door and see what you have, but then understand and catalog and analyze and clean up that information and figure out I've got 12 tape measures. I don't need 12 tape measures. I maybe need two. So maybe I can donate some tape measures. So it gives you that visibility to do that kind of work. And part of that is identity matching. All right, one more question before we hit the top of the hour. Uh, what about groups? How do you address the aggregation and, and disambiguation? I love to use those words of groups. Excellent. Um, just like we do with users, the same logic engine, the same tools are there to manage groups, to understand groups. And the first key thing is visibility. But one of the challenges that customers have is that they use nested groups in their Active Directory environment, which is a great way to save time and effort. I wanna have a master sales group. I'm gonna take East Coast sales group and West Coast sales group and drop it into one master sales group. And now everybody that's in those two groups inherits access in the master sales group, which is wonderful. Problem solved until you try and go see who's in the master sales group. No idea. All I know is it's East Coast sales and West Coast sales and I can't tell who that is. That's a real challenge when you start looking at analyzing another organization's group infrastructure and figuring out which users are in what groups, what functions do they have, how are they operating, and do I want to include this group? Do I want to merge it with one of mine? Do I want to keep it separate? Do I want to remodel it? So first of all, we can unnest those groups. And with Radiant Logic, it's a button. There's a button in our tool that allows you to click on this cute little blue button and it unnests groups. Because we've been disambiguating and understanding relationship in identity data now for 20 years. We can unnest all these groups and give you a group membership that shows all the definitive users. And on the member side, on the user side, we can populate the member of attribute and user profile 
for all the groups they're a member of. So you can see it on both sides now. So when you're doing attestation and account review and governance, you've got a member of attribute and a user for all the groups he's a member of. When you're reviewing groups or you're giving access or you're trying to consolidate groups, you've got a full list of users there. But then also you may again not want to put groups together or you may have groups that you want to segregate or you want to deconstruct. So I want to go ahead and, and take this group and segregate the users using different attributes to, to create new groups. And we have the ability to use attributes to form dynamic groups. We can do filters that say if you're in Chicago, you work for Dieter Schuler, you're on large accounts, you are in the special pricing group and you get access to special large account pricing. Now, if I move from, from Chicago to New York, Iridian Logic is going to automatically recalculate that group membership, take me out of the Chicago group, add me to the appropriate New York groups because it recognizes a change in my profile, and I've lost that access to the Chicago large accounts pricing model. This allows you to build groups based on attributes, but we can then convert them into static groups so that applications see them as a static group. We can populate the member of attribute in the user profile, and when there's a change, we'll automatically recalculate those static group memberships and that member of profile information. So now I'm using attribute-based access control sourced from attributes from databases, directories, from both organizations with, that I'm merging together, and I'm driving that to create and populate users in groups that are the core authorization tool for applications still. So I've got attribute-based access control through groups, dynamically updated by Radiant Logic, and provided in a way that applications can understand, I've really made a massive leap forward towards my zero trust model now, because I have the granularity that I'd never had before with groups. And my group explosion goes down dramatically because I can tailor groups to specific functions. When those functions are complete, when that project is over, that group goes away. If everybody, if nobody, nobody uh, any longer has an active project 2121, group 2121, it's a filter on that project and other information goes away. So the management is very simple. There's no manual provisioning, deprovisioning of groups. It's done by filters. You're doing attribute based access control and it cleans up after itself. So I have talked past the top of the hour. I will go back again and say thank you to everyone for joining us. Look in your email for a copy of the slides, a recording of today's uh, information. If you have any more questions, please reach out to your, uh, your uh, account executive or to Radiant Logic. We'd be happy to answer any questions for you. And we look forward to seeing you in two weeks as we provide a complete integrated view of identity data for your identity provider. Your identity provider is lonely. He wants to talk to people. We'll be happy to meet with him and give him all the information he needs. Take care and wear your masks. Thank you.